What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host of this YouTube exclusive look ahead to the Week 16. Oh, my goodness, Week 16. The season's almost over. Lines, spreads, turtles. Joining me, as they always do on Sunday night, Ryan Wilson. Wait, Ryan Wilson, Sean Wagner McGuff, and John Breach, back fresh back from Vegas. You guys look great. Let's dive in. And look at some lines. Reminder that you can subscribe to our actual podcast, eight episodes per week, daily. Did I say daily? Year-round, daily NFL podcast on Apple Podcasts. Just search for Pick 6 Podcasts, download, subscribe, and go ahead and click that YouTube subscribe button below to get great content like this. Bills, Patriots, the division on the line. Not really because the Patriots have to lose another game, but we can pretend like it for a second. Um... The Bills are going to New England, and they're playing the Patriots in a meaningful Week 16 game. It's kind of crazy. They, The Patriots are seven-point favorites in this game, the over-under 38-and-a-half. And a reminder, this game's on Saturday. We get a triple header, Ryan Wilson, of Saturday football. Do you think your man, Josh Allen, can do some damage in New England? Everything about this game scares me. The line, the over, under, the fact that it's on Saturday. We haven't yet. We're right in the middle of the Bills Steelers game. So it could be the case that the Bills already have a playoff spot clinched. We know that the Patriots do. So maybe there's a little less to play for for both teams. So there's a lot going on here, a lot to figure out. The last time these two teams met, when they were both 3 and 0, 26 total points were scored. So I like the under right now. It's not like the Patriots' offense has gotten any better. I feel like. The Bills offense with Josh Allen has actually improved a little bit. Uh, Devin Singletary is a lot of fun to watch. Frank Gore is going to run until he's 100 years old. But we know how good the Patriots defense is. Thanks in large part this week to Andy Dalton throwing as many interceptions as he could possibly do in 60 minutes of football. And we also know the Bills defense is really good. So um, I'm scared with the uh, with the spread here. I think the Patriots are going to win. I think that they're going to win by less than seven points. But I love the under 38 and a half. Yeah, it's funny you're talking about things that scare you, Ryan Wilson, because the thing that scares me here is that the Patriots are favored by seven points. I'm not even sure the Patriots can score seven points in this game. You mentioned Andy Dalton throwing a trillion interceptions on Sunday in that loss to New England, but you look at the other side of the ball, the Patriots could not move the ball against the Bengals, who have literally one of the worst defenses in football. If you can't move the football against the Bengals, I don't know how they're going to move it against the Bills. And you talked about that first meeting between these two teams back in week four. The Patriots won 16 to 10. If you look at that game, Josh Allen had hands down his absolute worst game of the season. He threw three interceptions. Uh, he was sailing footballs over people's head, which Sean Wagner McGuff was probably gifting out and putting on Twitter. And so it was ugly. I do not think Josh Allen could possibly play any worse this time around. Uh, so I love the Bills to cover this. I love the under. And uh, as long as I don't find out the Patriots are illegally filming anything from the Steelers press box to get the Bills on Sunday, I think I might take the Bills in the upset. I feel like we've been gr agreeing a lot lately on this podcast. I don't know how I feel about that. Unfortunately, I do have to agree with both of them. Love the under. Uh, if you look at both of these defenses, the Patriots and Bills are ranked first and second, respectively, in, in points allowed. Uh, so that's a no-brainer to love to love the uh, to love the under. The game really comes down to, as Breach hit on, Josh Allen and turning the ball over. But as Breach just mentioned, he threw three interceptions the last time they met, and they still only lost by six points. So I love the Bills to cover in this game. Josh Allen, the one thing he's been able to do since that Patriots loss all the way back in September is limit the turnovers. Um, entering Sunday night, we're recording this as the Bills and Steelers face off. Uh, Josh Allen had only thrown two interceptions in his previous nine games. He was picked off once in the first half, but I do love the way he's playing uh not making it so that he's not the reason why the bills lose i think these two teams are actually really similar um i don't know how either of these offenses are going to score so i like the bills to cover i do think the patriots are going to win i think it's a little bit too much to ask of, of the bills to go into foxborough um, and beat the patriots at this time of year uh but i like the bills to cover and i love the under yeah uh look it is one. It's hilarious that Breach is like ripping the Patriots for not being able to score after they dropped a 34 bomb on the on the Bengals in Cincinnati while shredding apart Andy Dalton and humiliating any sense of pride that the Bengals had left remaining in the season outside of getting Joe Burrow with the first overall pick when they're the worst team in football this year. Number two, I would point out that uh, the under is a four and one 
in these matchups since Sean McDermott arrived in Buffalo and six and three since 2015. McDermott's a great defensive coach. He's not aggressive offensively. They're not going to try and take too many shots down the field. I don't think Josh Allen learned his lesson against the Patriots secondary. I'm with you guys. I like the under in this spot too. I wouldn't even be surprised if it got down maybe in the 36 or 37 range. It's just so hard. Even even this time of year, like you just can't make an under much lower in the NFL than 35 just because you're going to get some points. And we saw the Patriots with Stephon Gilmore pick six of Andy Dalton. I don't know if we mentioned that they beat up on the Bengals today. But uh, with, you know, with the with the with the Stephon Gilmore pick six, you could get one of those with Josh Allen. And all of a sudden it flips everything. I But I tend to agree. I like the under seven is a bit much for me um, against a, a high quality team for the Patriots. Another game divisional matchup week 16. On Saturday, featuring about a seven-point touchdown spread, John Breach, the 49ers, who employ your brother, Mike LaFleur, are hosting the, the Rams on, uh, on, on Saturday. The 49ers are minus six and a half. They just lost to the Falcons. They, all of a sudden, they're a little dangerous. They need this one. The, the Rams just lost to the Cowboys in humiliating fashion. The over-under for this one is 46. What are your thoughts on this game? My thoughts are to the 49ers, apparently, are the one team in the NFL that absolutely crumbles under the high expectations of the Vegas point spread. This will be the seventh game this season where the 49ers have been favored by six or more. You guys know how many times they've covered in the previous six? Zero. They are 0-5-1 against the spread, win favored by six or more points. That includes Sunday's stunning loss to the Falcons. They were favored by 10, and they lost straight up. So... Uh, They go in there with these high expectations and they just don't meet them. Now, that being said, they absolutely destroyed the Rams earlier this season. It was 20 to seven. Jared Goff could not do anything against the 49ers defense. I could see a five interception game against Goff. The 49ers are going to get the monkey off their back of not being able to cover a big point spread this season. And I think they're going to win this game by two touchdowns maybe even three. This number could not get high enough for me. Six and a half almost seems you could double it, and I'd probably still take the Niners. Breach, I thought you were going to take the I thought you were going to take the Rams with the way you started, and I was excited because I could disagree with you um, because I also love the 49ers in this spot. You look at what Jerry Goff struggles, it's against teams with good defensive lines, teams that can kind of cramp the pocket, make sure he's not stepping into his throws, and that's exactly what the 49ers have. So I don't know how the Rams are going to be able to put up points, and as Breach alluded to, we saw this in the first meeting. He was terrible. I think he's going to have a similar type of outing. And look, we just watched uh, what the Rams did against the Cowboys. And I'm sorry, but that Cowboys defense has not been playing well this entire season. And they made the Cowboys defense look like the 49ers defense has looked for most of the season. So I actually think this 49ers loss might actually be an okay thing for them in the long run. I think it was a good wake up call for them. They kind of sleepwalk, sleepwalked their way through that game. They were kind of coasting. Everyone except George Kittle, it seemed like, was, you know, figured that they would just, you know, go in there and, and, and beat a bad Falcons team. But at the same time, are we that surprised the Falcons beat the 49ers? The Falcons, the one thing they've done this year is actually beat playoff teams. They beat the Saints earlier in the season. So I don't know if this is a terrible loss. I think all good teams are going to lose a bad game every now and then. It came down to the last play. They very easily could have survived that. So I think this is a really good bounce back spot for the 49ers. I think I would lean on the under two just because I don't really know how the Rams are going to score uh, against this offense, against this defense. And Todd Gurley, before garbage time against the Cowboys, had a really tough time against that Cowboys defense. I think he's going to have a nightmare against the 49ers defensive front. I'm less certain than the both of you, but I, I don't know which Rams team is going to show up, and that's sort of been the issue with this team for most of the season. Yeah, they beat the pants off the Cardinals and high five to Sean McVay, and they beat the Seattle Seahawks, a team that sort of seems to be trying to find its identity, but they got absolutely curb stomped by the Cowboys in a game that, I mean, it wasn't even close at any point during that contest. It gave the Cowboys a lot of confidence, and that's an issue uh, for their opponent next week. And the Eagles, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. But as, for the, as far as for the Rams, I don't know if they're going to show up or not. Look, the, the Falcons, as Sean pointed out, they're not a bad football team, and they're playing more than well enough to, for Dan Quinn to keep his job. If you're a Falcons fan, you may or may not like that. But they, uh, Matt Ryan had a, a pretty easy time in that last drive, driving down the field against that really good 49ers defense. Matt Ryan ain't the quarterback of the Rams. I like the 49ers to win. I don't think they'll cover, and, and I don't even know about the over-under just because the 49ers are already in the playoffs. The Rams have something to play for, but I don't think they're going to show up. So I don't want to touch the over-under, but um, I think the, the, the 49ers – Win, but less than six and a half points, Brent. 
Yeah, uh, it, it, I agree. It's a little tricky because you're basically playing – like you don't want to play too much off the result of what you saw with the Cowboys um, and the Rams. Although, you know, we've seen from this Rams team the the big – sort of thing that you can look at with, with, with Los Angeles is that they're very good against bottom tier defenses or, or teams outside the top 10 and very bad against teams inside the top 10. If you can get a pass rush on them, like Dallas was able to and put pressure on Jared Goff, uh, they can really struggle. And so I think that I would probably lean toward the 49ers here as well, especially if you can get it maybe a little bit lower number. We'll see. I think it's six out there on the market in some spots. Um, one of the things that San Francisco does, they have a great pass rush. Uh, their secondary should be a lot healthier after after sort of resting some guys. Um, and I just think that we're going to see a team very aggressive and desperate to win this game, knowing that the Seahawks are right there to win the division, whereas the Rams probably saw their their, their playoff hopes go up in smoke. And Jared Goff was spotted wearing a, like a compress the entire time. Uh, I would also – I would lean towards the over, I think think if we knew golf was going to be healthy but i'm a little worried maybe look at that san francisco team total over and see if there's something to play there because they should be able to score against the rams moving on to our next game a monday game saturday monday then we come back to sunday the packers at the vikings also huge sean divisional implications here unfortunately for the vikings it looks like the packers will need to lose twice in order for minnesota to steal the division but you want to be able to win this game the rams loss helps the vikings a ton they smashed the chargers smashed the chargers embarrassed philip rivers humiliated them in front of his whole well excuse me, in front of a bunch of minnesota vikings fans but you get the point vikings minus four and a half at home over under 46 monday night sean where are you going so I'm going to make this really simple. Maybe it's overly simplistic. I'm going to take the team with the better quarterback and the better defense. And that is the Minnesota Vikings. That's right. This season, Kirk Cousins is playing better than Aaron Rodgers. Look at every single metric. He has been better. I just watched Aaron Rodgers struggle against the Bears defense. Uh, completed somewhere around 50% of his passes, six yards per attempt. Really was not impressive. The, the Packers kind of coasted by because Mitch Trubisky is a terrible quarterback. Uh, and you look at what the Vikings did on Sunday, and Kirk Cousins was his normal, very good self. He's playing like a top six, top, top seven quarterback. And so for me, it, it, it's simple. If, if the team has the better quarterback, if the team has the better defense, and the team is at home, I'm taking them. And I know that sounds insane to say because if there's one knock against Kirk Cousins, it's his inability to win big games in prime time against winning teams. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, but, you know, the Packers don't have to apologize for being an 11 3. But they might be one of the worst 11-3 teams I think I've seen. Uh, so I, I love the Vikings in this game. And I, and I also like the under, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings do lean on their run game as they like to do. Um, and the Packers offense is kind of pedestrian. I think they have a really good offensive line, but they can usually mount one or two scoring drives per game. And that's about it. So uh, give me the under. Give me the Vikings. Uh, Kirk Cousins better than Aaron Rodgers. That's the takeaway here. Sean's stealing my talking points. The Packers are one of the worst 11-3 teams you'll ever see. I don't know if I'm willing to go so far as to say Kirby Cousins is worse than Aaron Rodgers, but it's close. Uh, Aaron Rodgers hasn't set the world on fire this year. He makes one or two throws a game that leaves you uh, with your jaw on the floor, and that's sort of what you remember. But the other throws can be infuriating if you're a Packers fan and you watch every snap, and I understand that. The defense has been good sometimes. It's been bad sometimes. Here's what I would do if I'm Mike Zimmer. I'm telling Kirk Cousins, look, man, it's Saturday afternoon game. It's a 4 p.m. game. Yeah, it's dark, but we're playing in Alaska. Don't worry about it. Just go out there, pretend like it's Saturday afternoon at 4. <laughs> rip it. Let it happen. Even if Dalvin Cook's not ready, that's fine. We got Madison back there. We'll be fine. Let the defense help you out. Thielen's back. Just pretend it's Saturday. I beg you. And that's all you have to do. And I think the Vikings, actually, I think they, um, four and a half, I think they cover that. Um, and I think the over goes with 46 because it could be a, you know, a, a, a fireworks display if things get heated up early. You know, I hate to use this cliche. The definition of insanity is the same thing over and over again and expecting the result to change in the past 14 weeks, guys. Every single week I have said to myself, this is going to be a week where Aaron Rodgers returns to his 2015 form. This is going to be the week where the Packers offense finally looks good. This is going to be the week where I ride them for the rest of the season to the Super Bowl. And every week the Packers have let me down. They're winning games by the skin of their teeth. As Sean said, they're barely beating the Bears. The week before that, they got lucky against the Redskins. I mean, this team, I don't know how they have gotten the season through this far to 11 and three. It, it, I watch them every week and I don't know how it's happening. And you look at the Vikings, Kirk Cousins has that 
offense running on all cylinders. This game is one of those where if Minnesota has any shot at winning division, they have to win Monday night. And I do think they're going to do it. I think they're going to cover the four and a half. And I think they're going to cover it easy. They might even win this by double digits because the Packers offense is junk and can't move the ball right now. This is just the third time since 2009 that the Vikings are more than a three-point favorite over the Packers in a game. Um, this is also uh, the, the the Vikings had covered the last three times that they were uh, three or more favorites, which indicates like they're they're begging you to take the Aaron Rodgers and the, and the points here. These uh, this matchup seven and two to the under since 2015. I would lean under here at 46, although not a huge play. Again, it's a full week from Monday. I mean, like, you know, you let some stuff marinate a little bit. And uh, I would probably lean towards the Vikings as well, but I would anticipate that this market moves back towards the Packers. So there's nothing in this game that I would jump on right now. I do, however, would I would like to get the Vikings closer to three. Uh, maybe it gets down to three and a half. You could buy it to three and just get it with the even field goal. Four and a half is a lot to lay against Aaron Rodgers, but I agree, Breach, uh, and Sean, actually. You know, he hadn't been very good uh, this season. The Cowboys smash the Rams put themselves in a great position to go into Philadelphia this week and win the division. And they are two and a half point favorites at the Eagles over under 48. If the Cowboys win, they take the division, Ryan, if the Eagles win and then win in week 17, they will take the division despite the fact that they should be on a five game losing streak, but somehow snuck by the giants in overtime. And then the Redskins today after having lost to the dolphins uh, the, the week before that, those two games. So I'm not surprised that the Cowboys are favorite here. Do you think they should be? What do you, do you would you take them, or would you go with the Eagles? Yeah, they should be favored, and you sort of touched on it. So here's what happened to the uh, Eagles the last five weeks. Lost to the Pats, lost to the Seahawks, lost to the mighty Dolphins. Should have lost to the Giants last week. They needed overtime to beat Eli Manning, and they needed, <laughs> they needed a miracle to beat Dwayne Haskins and the mighty Redskins on Sunday. Uh, yeah, so this team could be 0-5. They are not. They won the last two. That's great. So, look, we sort of got down on the Cowboys when they lost to the Pats. They got smoked by the Bills at home on Thanksgiving, and then they lost to Sean's Bears. They bounced back with this huge win over the Rams. Both these teams are terrible. The difference is that the Eagles are banged up on both sides of the ball. They have no one to throw the ball to, no one in the secondary to guard anyone, and I think that's going to be the difference. So I like the Eagles to, to lose this game, I like the Cowboys to win and cover, and I like the over because I think it's going to be a shootout because no one's playing defense in this game. Yeah, and if there is anyone who works for a garbage can company listening, I hope you guys sponsor this game because the NFC East is trash, and this is basically the NFC East title game. I just want to put both mini helmets back there. I want to get an Eagles one, a Cowboys one, put it in a trash bag, pick one out, and that will be my winner because this division, anything could happen. It's been so bananas all season that my heart, my head, everything says the Cowboys, but that means picking Jason Garrett to re rebound from everything he's gone through this season and make it to the playoffs. Uh, and so I just don't know that I see that happening. But as Ryan said, the Eagles are beat up. Their offense is beat up. Their offensive line is beat up. I think they've only had one receiver catch a pass in each of the past two games they've played in. If they can't throw forward passes to receivers, uh, they're not going to score points. And if they can't score points, they are not going to win. Uh, so I do kind of tentatively take the Cowboys here to cover. And I like the over because I think this is going to be a total circus. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just watched, as Ryan said, Dwayne Haskins and 34, 35 year old Adrian Peterson. How old is he now? Um, anyways, we watched old man Adrian Peterson tear up this Eagles defense. So if you're telling me I get Dak Prescott, who, even though he went through a little midseason slump, has probably been in the top five quarterbacks all year, and Zeke Elliott against this defense, I'm taking it every single day of the week. The only thing that concerns me, as they mentioned, is uh, Jason Garrett. The, the thing is that is kind of flying under the radar, though, and we work with a few Eagles fans, they're not really that happy with, with Doug Peterson. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, pretty unhappy with his offense and a lot of the short throws that Wentz is doing, talking about how they could have should have kept Frank Reich. Uh, so I don't know, look, every single coach outside of like Freddie Kitchens and Adam Gase is an advantage over Jason Garrett, but I don't think the coaching mismatch is as big as we would have said it would be back in week one. I think people have soured on Doug Peterson and rightly so there's a lot of injuries, but this offense isn't right. Carson Wentz is not right. So I will take the Cowboys better quarterback, um, and going against a team that frankly is having a hard time beating really inferior teams. And I think the Cowboys are just more talented right now because they're a lot more healthy. 
Yeah, the the line's a little off, I think. I mean, I'm not surprised that the Cowboys are favored, but like if this game were in Dallas, the Cowboys would be minus eight and a half. That's a lot. I mean, like that's a substantial that's a substantial number. And I understand that they just you know, beat the snot out of the Rams and look great doing it. But the Cowboys do that. They sort of flash randomly. And I understand the Eagles have been bad. Like, I, I get why the line is like that. I'm just not sure that it's it's the right line. However, I also don't know if I want to take the Eagles. But I do think that you can sort of throw out the last five weeks and the recency bias and all this because Philly has known all along that they just sort of had to get to a certain point and then they could just take care of business against Dallas. And when you look at that, look, Dallas screwed up the coin toss today, okay? Like, they screwed up the coin toss. If they can screw up a co- coin toss, they can definitely go into Philadelphia and r- try to run the ball against a team that is good at run defense and has no secondary whatsoever and not throw the ball. Would that surprise anybody if that happened? It wouldn't surprise me. Additionally, Philly weather could be crazy. This could be a monsoon. It could be a bunch of snow. It could be a situation where there's a ton of wind and neither quarterback can throw, and it just turns into a drag-out, knockdown fight. I would tend to agree with Ryan when he talked about the over. I think that in a, in a vacuum, this is a game that should see a lot of points. We saw that from the Rams, and I think the Eagles are probably more capable of scoring if they can get some guys healthy. I mean, obviously, Alshon Jeffrey's gone. Uh, we don't know if Nelson Aguilar will be back. They had three healthy wide receivers. That concerns me a little bit in terms of their scoring, but their defense is so bad and they'll need to keep up. I think they can also score. I want to see weather before I would do that because it's Philly, because it's December in the nor- you know, Northeast late in the year. Um, but uh, right now I would probably lean towards the Eagles, maybe toss them in a money line parlay or something like that. But I, I can't, I don't think I can back Jason Garrett as a road favorite to win the division in week in week 16 just doesn't sound doesn't pass the smell test Bengals at what what why are we doing the Bengals at dolphins what is this nonsense Bengals at dolphins breach when did you why did you change the run What's wrong with you dolphin this was supposed to be a game that we we're all going down to south beach for to watch this because they were supposed to be two oh and 15 teams playing each other instead uh the bingo the dolphins are actually decent the Bengals are uh well, the Bengals are the Bengals. they won a game uh dolphins minus two hosting the Bengals. Over under 46, breach. Who wins the uh, the toilet bowl? Is that over under the amount of fans that are going to be attending this game? Because 46 sounds about right. I think I am the only person on this podcast, probably at CBS Sports, who is excited for this game. I know, Brent, so you mentioned that two months ago, we had this circled on our calendar because we thought this was going to be the winless toilet bowl, but then we had to burn our calendar because these teams aren't winless anymore. Let me give you two quick facts about the Cincinnati Bengals. Number one, they have lost 12 straight road games. That is lost straight up. That has nothing to do with the spread. They have just lost them outright. Number two, they clinched the number one overall pick in the NFL draft if they lose this game. So common sense kind of says the Bengals are probably going to lose this game. There's incentive to lose. But you know if I've learned in one thing of watching the Cincinnati Bengals for more than 30 years, it is that common sense never makes sense with them. Uh, So between two horribly bad teams, I think the Bengals are somehow going to go to South Beach, win this game. I think the over is going to hit because I think Ryan Fitzpatrick and Andy Dalton are going to give us some sort of Christmas miracle that involves both teams scoring in the 30s. Uh, So I'm going over and I'm going Cincinnati. Why are we talking about this game? I mean, this is absurd. I So I will take the Dolphins. I Like, I don't feel good about it. Like, do I feel good that you don't know if you're going to get Fitz Magic or Fitz Tragic? And there's no way to tell whatsoever. Both of these defenses are in the bottom three defenses by DVOA. So I do agree with Breach. I think it's I think it's going to hit the over. This is the only set I'll give you is that the Bengals are 5-9 and nine against the spread this year. Uh, Dolphins are 7-7. Seven and seven, And most of those wins have come with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback um, in the second half of the year. So that's why I like the Dolphins. That said... Should the Dolphins really be favored against anyone in, 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 in this day and age? No. And so that's why I don't feel good about the game whatsoever. That said, I can't get the image of Andy Dalton on Sunday repeatedly throwing the ball to Stephon Gilmore as if he plays for the Bengals. I just can't get that out of my head. So I can't trust Andy Dalton. I can't trust the Bengals. Uh, Zach Taylor, I think, is the worst coach. I think Brian Flores has overachieved by winning a couple ball games. Um, we all thought coming into the year, that the uh, the Dolphins would go winless, and they have a couple wins. And Breach was talking about the Bengals maybe getting to 10 wins. So I'd safe to say they're the ones that are underachieving. Give me the Dolphins for that reason. Ah, uh, come on, guys. It's so simple. Maybe you need a refresher course. Look, there's nothing to say about this game except to quote Fletch the movie. And here's what's going to happen. First of all, you're going to have Andy Dalton playing left tackle. You're going to have Ryan Finley playing right tackle. You're going to have Bobby Hart playing quarterback. You're going to film your practices and send them to Brian Flores and the Dolphins just to guarantee that you get Joe Burrow done, sent, finished, Christmas present, 
congratulations, Don's Breach. You got a new quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. Fletch lives came out before Sean was born. That's how old Fletch is. Man, I love Fletch. Come on, fellas. Ball bearings. I like the uh, Dolphins in this game. What are they? Uh, they're now, what are they, 8-2 and two against the spread in their last 10 games? Somebody mentioned that on the podcast, I think. Somebody said something about that. Uh, just kidding. They didn't cover against the Giants. Breach tried to explain to me. They're 7-3 and three now against the spread in their last 10 games. Um, they got blasted by the Giants because they're a bad football team. But this game is in Miami. Um, I do think you will see some scoring. But I would, I would be a little bit worried about taking – the over because if there's one thing that we learned about the Dolphins is that they're not great in the red zone. Now they're much better when they have Devonte Parker, the best wide receiver in football, who we all know is an incredible player. Um, if he can get loose against that Bengals secondary, I think we could see 200 yard outing from Mr. Parker really explode on the scene, really let people know who he is become truly famous outside of, you know, smaller niche realms of, of football savants and, and whatnot. And uh, I'll take the dolphins to, uh, to win handily in this game. I would lean towards the under, but right now I would go dolphins at just the short number, which sounds insane considering where we were at week one, but that's where we are. All right. That's where that's the show. We somehow snuck the Bengals and the Dolphins in here. The breach took over for some freaking reason. We'll be back to do this again next week. And you can go to Apple Podcasts and check out our full list of shows, including our Sunday recap show that'll be up first thing on Monday morning. Get your week started right with the Pick 6 Podcast. Talk to you guys later.